Slow down, move over. It is a phrase law enforcement uses to remind us to break or change lanes to protect emergency crews that are stopped on the side of the road. His son looked out the window every day, waiting for him to come home. He just didn't come home. It's not, it's not right. In Florida, like in every state, it is the law. But recently, ABC 27 investigative reporter Katie Legron revealed how Florida's move over law isn't having much of an impact on preventing roadside crashes. And tonight in an impact check follow up, she shares new efforts to improve the state's law, including one company's solution to that problem. It happens almost daily in Florida. Scary, a little terrifying. Drivers who refuse to slow down and move over when a vehicle is stopped on the side of the road. Slow down, move over, give us some room. These are just a few of the images capturing the shocking consequences. This 2022 video released to us recently by Florida Highway Patrol shows a Lexus SUV plowing through a half dozen traffic cones, barely missing a mother and her young children standing to the side before colliding with a tow truck flatbed. Move over violators like this are a problem that kill nearly 350 people every year nationwide, according to AAA, with Florida ranking among the top three deadliest states. There's no protection right now or no law that requires drivers to move over for you. Which is why the group is now pushing state lawmakers to expand Florida's move over law to include not just police, first responders, construction and tow truck operators, but all disabled vehicles stopped on the side of the road. Unfortunately, so many people die on the roadside every single year. So anything that we can do to bring attention to this issue is, I think, extremely valuable and could save lives. Something needs to be done because there's fatalities every day, like clockwork. Meet David Tucker. We're out here right now. For the past two years, he and his team have been tracking published reports of move over crashes around the U.S. with a focus on deadly incidents involving passenger vehicles. In other words, people like you and me. Just what's published, and we're seeing 55 to 60 a month. So it's like 20 times as big of a problem. Tucker, a former entrepreneur in the oil and gas industry, became interested in roadside safety after his own close call. Tucker was retired, traveling the country in his motorhome, when every time he stopped to check his load, he faced the same glaring threat. It took a couple times pulling over in this, this big motorhome package, put on the hazard lights, and to realize that people didn't see me. They weren't doing it on purpose. They just didn't see me in time. Then he got a flat tire. An 18-wheeler came by, and it took off the side view mirror, so it came within inches of killing me. And I dove out of the way, and I was like, this, this is bad. The near miss forced Tucker out of retirement and into what he describes as a personal mission. What happened if one of my kids had this accident? And then I thought, well, I could have done something. So this startup guy started Emergency Safety Solutions, a company aimed at eliminating roadside crashes with the use of technology that already exists. So this is our system. Wow. These are your standard passenger vehicle hazard lights. Tucker's company gave them a boost. The automated or manual enhanced hazards flash about three hertz per second faster than current standards. That's a dramatic difference. When we use this on the side of the road, people come up to us all the time and they say, how do I get that? Hazard reported ahead. And this digital alert system warns drivers of a disabled vehicle up to four football fields away. The alerts can also be sent to your phone through common navigation apps. I thought there was a reason why it wasn't uh, done yet because it's such a simple, we're just combining proven technologies to give you a, a better forward collision warning system. Tucker's team is working to get car makers to voluntarily include the technology in new cars. Tesla, he says, has already committed. And while the feds have deemed his devices legal, Tucker hopes what he stumbled on will eventually lead to new federal safety standards. Seatbelt laws took like 30 years or so to really come into its being. Dr. Ricardo Martinez is an unpaid advisor to the company and former head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. I think the challenges technologically are not really big there. It's just a matter of uh, having the will to move forward. It was completely preventable. Should have never happened and move over with the tools and a law some say should apply to everyone. These are preventable crashes. Once you see the problem, it's really hard to just act like it doesn't exist. A federal spokesperson told us before new standards are adopted, the agency must first demonstrate a safety need and prove 
The new requirement would help solve that need. It's something Emergency Safety Solutions is still working to prove. I'm Katie Legrone reporting.